Hello everyone, I hope you're having a good week, I hope everything's going well, I hope all your classes are going well as, as well. Uh, we're continuing on and we're getting back into uh, pronunciation with things, with a bit of practice, as it were. And this week is we're getting into a, a bit of a finer point of things with intonation, or the rising and falling of pitch. Of course, English isn't a tonal language like, say, Mandarin or Cantonese, so the, the very definition the word, uh, excuse me, the word doesn't change depending on your tone, whether it be a, a high or low pitch things. But the meaning, the contextual meaning of what you say can be. All right. So when we talk about intonation and pitch and linking, which we'll get into a little bit later, uh, this helps convey meaning in what we say. For example, she got a dog. She got a dog. She got a dog. And you all, as we mentioned before about the uh, word stress and sentence stress paired with intonation puts together a sentence, a uh, spoken sentence. So, she got a dog. 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 Notice the the different intonation for both s sentences. She got a dog. She got a dog. She got a dog. Notice the intonation and stress changes depending on the punctuation used. This is a way of conveying meaning even though the words, the individual words, are the same. She got a dog, a cat, a rabbit, and a monkey. She got a dog, a cat, a rabbit, and a monkey. You can hear that intonation there as well when giving a list of different things. All right. She got a dog, a cat, a rabbit, a monkey, a koala, etc. She got a dog, a cat, a rabbit, a monkey, a koala, etc. There you go. So these are, we're going to go over these in more detail, but these are the uh, overviews of what we'll be talking about today. So intonation, remember intonation just for uh, defi defining purposes. Uh, the rise and fall of the tone or pitch of the voice. So if you imagine stress in making a word longer, slightly longer and louder. Intonation, changing the lowness or the mediumness or the highness of uh, the certain word itself. So stress and intonation go together quite often, of course. So for, let's go over some intonation patterns and then we can see how they go. For affirmative statements, for you know, agreeing with something, rising on the second to last syllable, then falling. Rising on the second to last syllable, then falling. Let's see an example. I went to the movies last night. I went to the movies last night. I went to the movies last night. So, I went to the movies last night. Last night. Last night. Last night. Last night. I went to the movies last night. You go ahead and practice as well. This is quite important. So, one time. I went to the movies last night. Now your turn. There you go. I went to the movies last night. One more time. There you go. Excellent. So we see rising on the second to last syllable, the penultimate syllable. Right there you go. I went to the movies last night. Last night. But for negative statements, for negative statements, here is the pattern. Rising on the second to last syllable, then falling. Showing that I didn't go to the movies last night. I didn't go to the movies last night. I didn't go to the movies last night. So I didn't go to the movies last night. I didn't go to the movies last night. So it's a flatter tone and a flatter and more negative to show that it's a it's a negative statement. It's not a very good statement, as in you know, something not good is being said or happened. For commands, telling someone what to do. Rising on the second to last syllable, then falling. Now let's take a look. Do your homework. Do your homework. Now, commands will be stressed much harsher. Uh, for example, on the main verb, do 
your homework. Do your homework. Do your homework. Do your homework. Do your homework. Do your homework. There you go. Do your homework. It's command. WH questions or information questions. We recall what they are. Rising on the second last facility, then falling. I see a pattern here. Where did you go last night? 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 You can hear the stress and the intonation. Where did you go last night? 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 See, there we go. Remember, WH questions are who, what, when, why, and how. Uh, how is not exactly WH, even though there's WH in it, but it's so you also see the phrase information question used. Where did you go last night? Then for yes, no questions, for yes, no questions, we have this pattern. Rise in intonation. Did you go to the movies? 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 So we have rising intonation throughout. But for uh, open choice or open-ended lists, we have that rising, rising, rising until the end. Rising, rising, rising until the end. Did you go to the movies, play games, stay home? Did you go to the movies, play games, stay home? So you can hear the rising intonation. The movies, play games, stay home. Did you go to the movies, play games, stay home? Did you go to the movies, play games, watch TV, go for a walk, stay home? So we have rising intonation for every item in that choice, every item in that list, until the final one, until the final one. Boom, boom, boom. Closed choice, closed ended list. Here we go. Rising, rising, falling on the last syllable. Let's see what we have. Did you go to the movies, play games, or stay home? Did you go to the movies, play games, or stay home? Did you go to the movies, play games, or stay home? Or stay home. There you go. Did you go to the mo movies, play games, or stay home? Did you go to the movies, play games, or stay home? There we are. For tag questions, words we put on the end of a sentence to form a question, like right, okay, aren't you, didn't you, isn't it? These are, uh, there are two types of tag questions. Mm -hmm. Confirmation, as in we think, the speaker, the thinks, we know the answer, uh, but wants to confirm, wants to make sure of it, so that's falling at the end. You went to the movies last night, didn't you? You went to the movies last night, didn't you? You went to the movies last night, didn't you? You went to the movies last night, didn't you? There we are. Uncertainty, when we don't know what's actually, what the answer is. We don't even think we know. So this is a, we use rising intonation. Class will finish soon, right? Class will finish soon, right? Class will finish soon, right? Going up, up, meh, meh, meh. So, uh, and then for the statement before the question tag has rising, falling intonation. Going, class will finish, class will finish soon, right? So for this, uh, to, to make the tag have, uh, have it be more distinct, it, we need to go down and then back up again. All right. Linking. Uh, oh, that, that's about, about uh, intonation. There'll be more practice and more uh, supplementary videos and material for us to look at and practice with. But uh, I, as I mentioned before, for the, these uh, the last few lectures, the main lectures, I've had to record them ahead of time, far ahead of time. So they're a bit with a, a bit of a, in a vacuum by themselves. So I'm having to keep things a bit more vague. For the moment linking is putting in is is basically connecting the the sounds of words together and it's something that we do as native speakers and especially as fluent speakers every language does this as, as i know i don't but i don't know every language to be fair but korean does it as well we we have it a simulation things like that so i linking instead of saying i want to leave 
she's going to leave. I don't know. We we change it from I want to I wanna. I wanna leave. She's going to leave. She's gonna leave. I don't know. To I don't know. Humans, as uh, as I'm sure you you know, humans are very lazy animals. We are incredibly lazy. That includes in almost every facet, in, but especially in how we talk. We want things to be easier. We want to uh, make things easier for our pronunciation. That's just how we are. Uh, there are certain words and phrases uh, that we we use uh, in Korean as well uh, that we would that we combine together, we link together into, even though they not, may not be 100% grammatically correct, it is, it is the practical usage of the language. So, it is how it is. We'll get into the more final parts of how that affects our speech in the, when we get into the phenoms of English. But this is just linking. All right. This is the end of the main lecture, but there'll be more material coming up. Please have a safe week and live long and prosper.